Здравствуйте, товарищи. Welcome back to Russian Through Propaganda. Today is day 24, and we have a variety of topics today. Most importantly, probably our short-form adjectives. Uh, but before we get to those, let's look at a, a couple of vocab entries that are very close in meaning. Uh, one of them uh, is something we'll call a special modifier, uh, and the other one is just an ordinary adjective. So let's just recall what we mean by special modifier. Uh, those are all basically adjectives in that they modify um, nouns, right? And so they change their endings to agree with the gender and the case of whatever noun they're modifying. Um, but their endings are somewhat different from those of ordinary long adjectives that we've seen so far, like novi or haroshi, right? They're, they're somewhat different. So we have to always treat them separately. And today we, we're adding another one, vies. Vies. So vies means uh, something like whole. We can usually just translate it as the whole, or in some cases, all of something, right? Vies. Okay, we can tell just by looking at that word that it's not an ordinary adjective, right? It doesn't have anything looking that looks like a, a long adjectival ending. Simply, it, the, the form for the masculine is vies. The feminine is sia, and the neuter is sior. Okay, so once we see those three endings, we can see the, the gender uh, distinctions, right? Bies is masculine, sia is feminine, and sio is neuter. Uh, our other uh, adjective we're adding here, again, very close in meaning, is sieli, sieli. And just looking at that form, we can guess that that, that sure looks like an ordinary uh, long adjective like novi or haroshi or plahoi. Those forms we've already learned. So CLE, uh, again, very close in meaning to VAs, but CLE uh, often best translate, translates as the entire, right? Uh, someone ate an entire pizza versus someone ate the whole pizza. So again, you can see that the, it's a very, very uh, slight distinction in the meaning of these two um, adjectives. Uh, but anyway, let's look at some examples. Um, our first poster today, all of this is made out of anchovies. Okay, this, this use of sioa we've already seen, actually. We've seen that sioa uh, can mean everything. And that form actually isn't really a noun. It's just an ad, it's a form of this um, special modifier, meaning something like all the stuff. If we were to think of it literally, right, all the neuter stuff. It's simply the neuter singular form of this new special modifier, vies, right? So again, sio, at the sio, all of this is made out of anchovies. Um, so we can think of that as a somewhat specialized use of, use of sio, right? This neuter singular meaning everything. Now, if we look at that second poster, a rather creepy one with a Soviet child who's hell bent on world domination, and we see it used here really as, as, as an adjective, vies mir, right, the entire world or the whole world, again, the meaning is very, almost the same, the whole world budget nash, vies mir budget nash, the whole world will be ours. Okay, and yeah, th this child has got to be stopped, right, someone please stop him before it's too late. Okay, anyway, let's look over the forms for vies, and again, since this is a, uh, special modifier, these forms may not be entirely predictable. Although as usually happens, if we look at them closely, we can kind of catch on to what's what's going on here. Uh, first of all, if we look at vies, we see that it's soft, right? So any ending we're adding to this word is going to be soft. Uh, if we look across the nom nominative, vies, psia, psio, right, all soft forms. And then elsewhere we get uh, what look like soft endings we've seen uh, here and there. Right, sivo, psie, sivo, and then down in the dative, simu, psie, simu. Uh, so again, we have to be careful with these special modifiers, but usually they're not really that surprising, uh, especially when we, we at least look to see whether or not they're taking soft or hard endings. So we can say things like vies tour, right, the whole cake or all the cake. Sivo torta, of, the, of all the cake, of the whole cake. Accusative inanimate would stay the same, vies tort, and then dative simu tortu, to or for the whole cake. Uh, see the feminine example, siai kra, all the caviar, uh, siomalako, all the milk, 
All right, so you can see here how, depending on what we're talking about, we can translate vieche as whole or all, right? We wouldn't say the whole caviar or the whole milk. We'd say all the caviar, all the milk. Okay, so as we know, silly is just an ordinary adjective. There's nothing really here to talk about. Um, but you might think of it as a slightly more emphatic uh, cousin to vieche, right? It means usually something like the entire right, a bit more emphatic, uh, but again, sometimes, depending on context, you could also translate it as whole, and it'll make, it'll make perfect sense. So, for example, silly stuck on uh, the enti an entire glass of something, or uh, silly uh, butulka, an entire bottle, silly yablaka, right, an entire apple, or the whole apple. Okay, let's uh, move to the next page and look at some examples. The child ate all the cake. He ate the whole cake. Okay, now I'll compare that to on siel sieli tort. He ate an entire cake. Uh, so again, very close in meaning. Uh, but again, sieli we see is just acting like an ordinary adjective, whereas vies is somewhat peculiar. On siel siunashuikru. Here's a feminine example. He ate. All our caviar, all of our caviar. On Sielu pizza, he ate an entire pizza, or he ate the whole pizza. On Vuitov Siel Malako, he drank all the milk, or on Siel Siele Yablaka, he ate an entire apple. Okay, let's fill in a few forms of vies. So here, as usual, we just have to refer to the table until we've memorized these somewhat unusual forms. But remember, vies. Is acting like an adjective. It's got to agree in terms of case and gender with the noun it's modifying. The word "niujerli," by the way, means it expresses disbelief in a question. So, can it really be, or is it, is it really the case that blah blah blah? So, for example, in number one, "ya tibi niujerli niujerli ti vuipil blank vodku." Right? Can it really be that you drank all the vodka? And so again, we need the uh, we need. A form of vies to agree with vodku. Vodka is feminine, so we would start with psia, and now we need to put that into the accusative, uh, and that will give us psiu vodku. Neojili ti vuipil Number two, neojili uh, blank francuske vino takoe haroshe. Is it really true? Can it really be that all French wine is so good? Okay, so Francuski vino is neuter, neuter singular. Here it's also the subject of the question. So we get fsio. Now again, we have to be careful maybe every time we see fsio, it, it might not mean everything, right? It only means everything if it's standing by itself. But if it modifies a noun, like here, a neuter noun, fsio vino, it means all, all the wine, all French wine. Neugele fsio francuske vino takoe haroshe. Number three, они сказали, что прочитали blank статью, но я им не поверил. They said that they have read or had read the whole article, but I didn't believe them. Okay, статья is feminine. We see it here in the accusative. So, они сказали, что прочитали всю статью. They said they had read the whole article, но я им не поверил. I didn't believe them. Number four, Neojeli ti posmatrel blank at the discussion film. Okay, so we're talking about the whole boring movie. Did you really watch? Can it really be that you watched the whole of this boring movie, this whole boring movie? Vies, right? We need masculine, masculine accusative. Vies at the discussion film. Um, so we could, how can we translate that? All of this boring film, this, this entire boring film, this whole boring film. Did you watch all of it? Number five, я хочу помогать blank человечеству. And this is a somewhat unusual example. It can be a bit hard to think of examples sometimes, but uh, we want to practice the dative here. As we know, помогать, to help, is followed by an object in the dative, right? So here we have человечеству, which is neuter, here in the dative человечеству. So we need a dative, a neuter dative. It'll be всему. Всему. Я хочу помогать всему человечеству. Right? I want to help all of humanity. Um, 
Yeah, I usually mention here that this type of idea is not necessarily a good thing in Russian literature. It's one of those ideas you see, for example, in Dostoevsky, that um, the idea that we want to help humanity in the abstract is actually a rather dangerous idea, uh, which may strike a lot of us as somehow counterintuitive because we say that kind of thing all the time. Uh, so file that away. That's I, I like to point out some of these things that are uh, maybe not uh, exclusively, but somehow peculiarly Russian ideas that will resurface later when we start reading literature or poetry uh, that can often um, be surprising to uh, non-Russians and maybe force us to rethink certain ideas that we may have. Anyway, number six, Neojeli tvoya koshka siela blank ribu. Okay, so riba uh, is feminine here in the accusative. Can it really be that your cat ate all the fish? Siu ribu. Number seven, can it really be that this boy will eat the entire or eat the whole sandwich? Neojeli malchik siest vies buderbrot. Right, buderbrot is cognate with what in English would be butter bread. So it's a Germanic barling and means just a you know, slice of bread that's been buttered up. and So anyway, it's basically the old-fashioned Russian word for sandwich, although nowadays, well, traditionally a budobrod was an open-faced sandwich. Uh, so nowadays when you hear the term sandwich, which is obviously a more recent English barling, that usually refers to something like a, something with two slices of bread the way we're used to seeing in the U.S. at least. Number eight, sasiet uh, pomagayet blank nashi simia. The neighbor is helping all our family, our whole family. Simya is uh, feminine. We're getting the dative again after pomagait. So it's going to be psie. Sasiet pomagait psie nashi simia. Number nine, can it really be that this child will drink all the milk? Neojeli rybionek vuiptit psio malako. Again, a neuter, in this case accusative, psio malako. Number 10, I I worked all day. I want to take a break. Okay, Dien is a soft masculine noun. Ya rabotel vies gen. Chachu adachnut. By the way, what case is vies gen in there? It's in the accusative. Again, we can't tell. There's no change from the nominative because it's an inanimate masculine. But we can call this the uh, accusative of time expressing duration, right? So vies gen simply means uh, for the entire day, for the whole day. I've been working the whole day. I want to take a break. Okay, let's fill in a few examples of tseli. Now, this is a lot easier because this is just an ordinary adjective. Uh, so we just need to check for agreement in terms of case and gender with the noun we're modifying. So let's say yesterday I read an entire book. It was so interesting. Včera je prečitala... Okay, knigu is feminine, accusative, so this will be tseluju. Tseluju knigu. Ona bola taka interesnaya. Number two, my friend my friend lived for an entire year in Russia. It was so interesting for him. Moi drug žil tseli god v Rasi. Jemu bola tak interesna. Again, there's another accusative time expression, right? For how long was he was he in Russia? An entire year. So we take the, the phrase silly god, put it into the accusative. Although again, here there's no change in the form because it's inanimate and we get a phrase silly god, meaning for an entire year. Number three, the entire bottle of wine costs only 122 rubles. I bet that's some good wine. Okay, so uh, an entire bottle, celia butilka. Celia butilka vina stoit torka sto rubia. Number four, can it really be that such a tiny child will be able to eat an entire portion of beet soup, borsh? Neojeli takoi malinki ribionek smožit siest tseluju porsiju barsha. So an entire portion. Porsia uh, is uh, feminine, so an entire portion. Tseluju porsiju barsha. Number five, vuitorka no jablka hatitje. Do you want only one apple? No, I want an entire kilogram. Okay, so here we have yachachu, and kilogram is obviously the, accus the accusative direct object. We need a masculine uh, 
Adjective Tselly. Tselly kilogram. I want an entire kilogram. Number six. Вы хотите blank курицу? Okay, so do you want an entire chicken or only half of a chicken? Вы хотите... Let's look at курицу. It's obviously a feminine accusative. Вы хотите целую курицу или только половину? Половина is a feminine noun meaning half. Okay, a few questions you might try answering. Ты можешь выпить целую бутылку шампанского? Can you drink up an entire bottle of champagne? Hopefully not in one sitting. Okay, number two. Ты можешь съесть целую банку икры? Can you eat up an entire tin of um, caviar? Right, now look at the, by the way, these perfective verbs. We're asking, can you accomplish this? Can you successfully drink up, right, completely drink or gobble up, completely eat an entire tin of caviar? Number three. Uh, yeah, caviar usually comes in a tin or in a, in a glass um, canister or jar. Number three, ты можешь прочитать целый русский роман? Can you read, again, perfective, прочитать? Can you read an entire Russian novel? And number four, ты можешь написать целую статью сегодня? Can you write an entire article today? Okay, so here's a note. Let's revisit quickly this issue of tsua. We've already mentioned today that tsua, the neuter singular, can stand by itself, right, without a noun, meaning something like all the stuff, right? Or in English, we'd say everything, everything. Uh, now, uh, there's another word that is actually the plural form of this uh, vies, this word we've just learned today. Tsia means literally all the things or all the people. Now, again, we're not using a whole lot of plurals uh, in this in book number one. We're saving plural nouns. Uh, mostly for book two, but this form uh, we'll need to use already, but, and we have used it to mean every one, right? Every one. Again, xie means all, plural, right? So it can be followed by anything in the plural, uh, things, cars, books, computers, also people, right? So again, uh, as we're using it in, the, in book number one, it's usually going to mean every one. So let's compare a couple of posters. The first one, Siena Vliberi. Okay, how do we know to read Sia there? Well, keep in mind, uh, it's very important to remember that Russians don't normally write the two dots above the letter your. Right, we've talked about that already. Uh, we know that Russians, they simply know where to say your and where to say yeah. Um, now, sometimes there can be... Uh, that form can be ambiguous. That happens sometimes in Russian. And if, if, if that were the case, they would write the, the dots to make perfectly clear, clear that we should read sua in some case of ambiguity. But that's extremely un unusual, right? So we have to usually go on context, right? Uh, this poster clearly means everyone should go to the elections. Everyone should go vote, right? Sia na vliberi, everyone to the elections. And again, we read sia. But if we look at another poster, uchis blank, dielet sam, uh, the imperative, learn to do uh, everything yourself, right? So the only thing here that makes sense based on the context is sua. But again, note that we, we don't see the dots on the poster. We simply see sia, and we have to know based on context that this is indeed everything. And so we read sua. Uchis sio dielet sam. Now, remember, in the textbook, we're, we're, we are trying to write the dots wherever they occur, right? Uh, so unless there's some oversight on my part, then you will see the, the two dots. But just keep in mind, whenever you're, you're reading a Russian text that's not in this textbook, you should not expect to see the dots. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's something that down the road, when you've had more Russian, it'll become a lot easier to know when to read you and when to, when to read yeah. Um, let's look at some more examples. Я люблю всё. Всё здесь так хорошо. I love everything. Everything here is so good. Неужели ты не любишь квас? Все любят квас. Okay, so there's an example, right, uh, where, first of all, look at the plural verb, любят. Right, so sometimes it's not only the, kind of the, the, the sense of the sentence that will allow you to guess whether it's все or всё, but also maybe a verb form. Right, if the verb is plural, then 
Sia is the only possible form, right? Because that, remember, is plural itself, meaning every, all the people or all the things. Sia lubit kwas. All the people love kwas. Everyone loves kwas. Okay, there's an example, somewhat unusual for now at least, right, of, uh, you know, sia, meaning not everyone, not all the people, but all the whatever, right? It could be anything that comes in, in, in plurals, right? I don't know which car to buy. I love all the cars. I love them all. Okay, let's fill in a few blanks. Um, now here we're just wondering, is it sio or sia, right? So we're not using the uh, vies here adjectivally the way we were earlier, but simply in these kind of special standalone usages where it either means everything or everyone. Okay, number one. Blank gavariat što je tad novi film interesnui. Blank says, or say, actually the Russian is plural, gavariat. Uh, blank say that this new film is interesting. Okay, the only thing that would make sense there in terms of the context is uh, sia, and on top of that, we see the plural plural verb gavariat, so everything hangs together. All the people say that this new film is interesting, or in better English, everyone says that this new film is interesting. Number two, ya хочу помочь тебе. I want to help you. Я сделаю blank для тебя. I will do blank for you. Okay, everything is the only thing that makes sense. So that'll be все. Я сделаю все для тебя. I'll do everything for you. Number three. Blank знает, что в России часто пьют чай. Blank know that in Russia they often drink tea. Часто пьют чай. Okay, kind of like the first one. Everyone knows that in Russia they often drink tea. So that'll be все, that plural form. We check, we see we have a plural verb, znayut. So everything works out. All the people know that in Russia they often drink tea, or everyone knows that in Russia they often drink tea. Number four, blank хотели жить целый год в России. Okay, we have a plural verb, хотели, in the past tense, right? Everyone wanted to live for an entire year in Russia. Everyone is the only thing that makes sense here. Everyone wanted to live for an entire year in Russia. Number five. What's your favorite poster? Uh, well, let's say blank. Okay, we could, of course, say I love everything, but that doesn't really make sense here, right? We're saying I love all the posters, right? I can't choose just one. They're all so delightful. Okay, so я люблю все. Okay, and again, you might circle that because that's just a, a somewhat unusual example of a standalone sia, meaning all the things, right? Not all the people. So we have to watch out for that usage. Uh, number six, blank. Мы уже можем читать blank. Okay, so we have two blanks here. Uh, now, the subject of the verb, we are able to read, certainly sounds like it's talking about people, right? So we want to say, all of us, all us, or as we say in English, all of us are, are already able to read everything. That's the only thing that makes sense there. Number seven, she is able to do everything. She's able to cook, to dance, to draw. Okay, она умеет всё. Right, it's the only thing that makes sense here. She's able to do everything. She knows how to do everything. Она умеет всё. And then we get several infinitives. Right, she's able to, she knows how to cook, готовить, танцевать, to dance, and to draw, рисовать. Number eight, как у тебя дела? How are things going? And the follow-up question, is everything at you good, right? Or things, is everything good with you? Все у тебя хорошо. Все у тебя хорошо. Okay, let's look now at another fairly important topic today, uh, short-form adjectives. So what do we mean by short-form adjective? Well, let's first think back to 
long form adjectives, which we, we know already, but we didn't really call them long form adjectives at the time. Uh, maybe we did here and there, but not really. We just called them adjectives. Uh, so uh, just an ordinary long form adjective is one like novus or interesnus, right? Where the masculine ends in us. We'll call that a long adjectival ending. So again, adjectives like novi, uh, interestly, and then today we've learned the new one, sieli. Those are just ordinary, run-of-the-mill, long-form adjectives. Um, now we saw a couple of little subtypes of those. First, we saw a few that were affected by the spelling rules, especially the seven-letter spelling rule, like haroshi, right, which is basically acting just like novi, except there in the masculine you see the spelling rule issue, haroshi. We also saw that that was affected by the uh, five-letter spelling rule of the neuter form, giving us, uh, instead of novoye, novoye, we got haroshaya, right? So haroshaya is, is, is affected by spelling rules, but otherwise it's just an ordinary long-form adjective. Then we saw a few so-called instressed adjectives like plachoi or barshoi, where in the masculine we see the ending oi, right? And uh, the stress is always on the endings of those adjectives, balshoi, balshaya, balshoya, and so forth. Okay, so we can think of all those forms we learned back in chapter one as just ordinary Russian adjectives. Now, alongside those, we've learned a few so-called special modifiers, and we learned again a new one today, vies. Um, let's think back to a few of those, uh, right? She, meaning whose, uh, the possessive uh, Modifiers like foy, moy, nash, vash, um, and so forth. So remember that the special modifiers are kind of unusual. They're very, they're very limited in number. We've already seen most of them already. So you can sort of compartmentalize those and just realize that they're kind of special. We have to more or less memorize them because they're not really very predictable. Uh, but once we, once we memorize them, we're done with them. We're not going to be seeing those patterns constantly in Russian. Okay, today's... Uh, Today we're adding a third type of adjective, short form adjectives, which are basically shorter versions of the long forms we learned back in chapter one. Now, how did this come about? Well, again, we could talk about the history of the language a little bit, uh, but long story short, uh, adjectives traditionally had two possible sets of endings. Uh, the first was simply, uh, well, the first endings we see in adjectives are actually pronouns. And you can actually see that if you, you may have noticed it already, if you looked over some of these adjectival endings like uh, yuvo in the masculine genitive or yimu, right? Like haroshava, haroshemu. Well, look at those endings, yuvo, yimu, and they sure look a lot like the pronoun forms of on that we learned, uh, that, that we've also learned, right? Think of another example like, I don't know, uh, dative, uh, Feminine dative ye, as in haroshe. Well, that looks exactly like ye, right, the dative form of ana. So essentially, and that doesn't always work out anymore, but historically, all of those long adjectival endings were originally pronouns that were tacked on to the end of uh, now, well, in this case, adjectives to mark case, right? Now, alongside those uh, long endings, we also had uh, what, if, if memory serves, these are actually older, right? basically noun endings, right? Now let's think, what are our noun endings in Russian? Well, masculine nouns take no ending, zero ending. Feminine nouns take a, ah, or ya, ja, but mainly a, ah, and neuters take o, right? Okay, so again, historically, adjectives could take uh, both, the, both of those sets of endings, right? You, you could see adjectives in, with long endings or short endings, and again, the short endings are the same endings you would use with nouns. Now, by the time we get to modern Russian, um, well, let's think back maybe a couple hundred years or a hundred years, right? By the time we reach that point, um, short form adjectives are only used in the predicate position, unless it's some weird kind of archaicism that we see in fancy poetry or whatever. But basically, long story short, short form adjectives, that is adjectives with noun endings, are used only in the predicate position. Okay, what does that mean? What is the predicate position? Well, let's think of a simple sentence like, he is hungry. He is a subject, is is the linking verb, and then we have a predicate, in this case, a predicate adjective, pointing back to the subject. 
he is hungry, she is hungry, they are hungry, and so forth. Okay, so that's the predicate position. And more specifically here, we're using predicate adjectives, right? We're putting an adjective in that predicate position. Now note that it, here it's pointing back to the subject, but it's not directly modifying a, a noun, right? So if we say something like a good, an interesting book, interesnaya kniga, that is not a predicate adjective, right? And in that instance, in modern Russian, we always get the long form of the adjective. Хорошая книга, интересная книга, новая книга, and so forth. But again, in kind of, well, again, think back to think back a couple hundred years or a hundred years, um, we could put that, if we use an adjective in the predicate position, we could say something like, эта книга интересна. Right, интересная книга, but эта книга, that's a subject, then we have an understood linking verb is, which again, we don't usually say in Russian anymore. And then the predicate adjective, this book is interesting. Эта книга интересна. Okay, let's pause for a moment. What what does it mean in terms of case forms if, if uh, modern Russian is only using these short form adjectives in the predicate position? Well, since they're pointing back to the subject, right, that's the only thing they can do in that predicate position. That means that they can only appear in the nominative case. Okay, so that's the first thing that happened is all the case endings except for the nominative, are dropping out. They're no longer used because, again, these short-form adjectives are only being used in this very specific position in which they always point back to the subject, which is always in the nominative in the Russian sentence, and therefore these adjectives can only occur in the nominative. Okay, so uh, now we have another step more, more recently. Um, we could say that uh, only a certain rather select num number of adjectives are using their short form at all in modern spoken Russian. Okay, this is a bit of a sloppy, to a, a, a complicated topic, because if you're reading literary Russian, you, you will very well see all sorts of adjectives us used in short forms, right? Especially if you go back, again, 100 or 200 years, you'll see all sorts of adjectives used, used that way. So in theory, there, there are a great many Russian adjectives that have short forms in theory, uh, but you don't, in, in terms of spoken Russian, you, you almost never hear them anymore. And it may sound kind of stilted if you're using them. So, for example, uh, it's not wrong to say, but nowadays you would almost, you would almost always hear, right, just simply the long form in that predicate position. So, um, nowadays we're down to really a fairly limited number of adjectives that are heard with any kind of regularity in the short in their short form. Um, and that's what we have in our book here, right? I've got a list. Uh, there are several more, and we'll learn more in later books. But here's a kind of a starter's list of uh, long-form adjectives, which are also used quite often in their short form in the predicate. We notice that a lot of these have to do with kind of uh, passing feelings, right? Uh, let's look these over. And again, look, first we have the long forms, uvierny, and then, which means certain or sure, and then we have short forms, uvieren, uvierna, uvierna, uvierny. Right, he is certain, she is certain, it is certain, they are certain. That final form is the plural form. Okay, so let's review uh, what we said earlier, maybe somewhat confusingly. These are the only forms, the only forms possible for a short form adjective, right? That is to say, only the nominative forms. We've got a masculine one, a feminine one, a neuter one, and then a plural one, right? Again, let's think, why is that? Because these can only appear in the predicate position, right? In which case they refer back to the subject. Therefore, they can only appear in the nominative in modern Russian. Okay, so when would we use these short forms? Well, if we say something like he is certain, right? He subject, linking verb is, and then predicate adjective, on uvieren, or ana uvierna, she is certain, or let's say we are certain, muy uvierni. Okay, let's just read through the remainder of these and pick up on the pattern. Pianui, uh, pian, piana, piana, Okay, we have a, some stress irregularities there in a few cases. Sober, that's the long form. 
резв, резва, резва, резвы. By the way, that's not a typo. Uh, if you, you'll hardly ever see this, but if you see two underlined vowels in a word in this book, uh, again, hopefully it isn't a typo. In this case, it certainly isn't. That means that either stress is possible. So that's fairly unusual in Russian, but it does happen sometimes where you have two stress patterns that are both acceptable. So we could say trezvy or trezvy. Uh, depending on what Russian you're talking to, they may have a preference for one form or the other. Okay, healthy, zdarovy, zdarov, uh, zdarova, zdarova, zdarovy. Gatovy means finished or ready. Short forms gatov, gatova, gatova, gatovy. Uh, happy, shastivy. Remember the te isn't normally pronounced here. Shasliv, shasliva, shasliva, shasliwy. Busy or occupied, zanyati, zanyat, zanyata, zanyata, zanyati. Uh, full or sated, right, meaning you, you've eaten your fill. Siti, sit, sita, sita, siti. Alive, živoy, živ, živa, živa, živy. Dead, mjortvi, mjortv. Mirtva, mirtvo, mirtvi. Okay, five more forms, and we see a, a slight aberration here. Look at the black box. We always want to be on guard when we see the black box. Here we have a mobile vowel coming in. So let's look at the first example. Davoli means satisfied. What if we want to say, I am satisfied, right? Or let's say, he is satisfied. On davolin, right? Where you need the short form of the adjective in that predicate position. But instead of davoln, which is maybe a little bit tricky to say, right? You've got that kind of tricky cluster at the end of the word. Uh, we bring in a mobile vowel to split up the cluster, but we do keep the L soft, right? So our mobile vowel is gonna be yeah, and that gives us davolin, davolin. But in the other, in the remaining forms, we, we do add a, an ending, which is a vowel, which helps kind of make that cluster easier to pronounce. And so the mobile vowel is no longer present. So let's read out these forms again altogether. Davolny is the long form. Davolin, davolna, davolna, davolny. Free or available. Svabodny, svabodjen. There's the mobile vowel. Svobodna, svobodna, svobodny. Hungry, galodn, sorry, galodny. Goladin, galadna, goladna, goladny. Or galadny, right? So again, competing stress patterns possible there. Uh, sick, balnoy, bolin, balna, balno, balny. Needed or necessary, nužny, nužen, nužna, nužna, nužny. Okay, let's look over some examples. This, this is, you know, it can seem a bit confusing at first, so let's try to really nail down when we can use short form adjectives. Now, again, it may it always helps in Russian to think what is kind of the default uh, form or construction and what is a little bit peculiar. And you should think of these short form adjectives as quite peculiar, right? They have a very specific, very limited use in Russian. And on top of that, as we've said, it's really a, a very limited list of adjectives that are used in this way anymore. Um, so let's look these up a few, look over a few examples. Adjective student goladin. This student is hungry. Okay, again, this student subject, understood linking verb is, predicate adjective goladin. Okay, and since galodny is used in the short forms, uh, this, this is where we need to use the short form, right, in the predicate position. But look at the uh, next example, at the galodny student. This is a hungry student. Okay, here we have galodny directly modifying a, na a noun. Student, it's, it comes in front of the noun, but it's clearly not a predicate adjective. So we have no choice but to use the long form of the adjective there. At the galodny student. Okay, let's take some feminine examples same, saying the same thing. At the studenta galadna, 
this female student is hungry, predicate adjective, short form. But galodna estudiente chitaya, the hungry female student is reading. Galodnaya comes in front of directly in front of the noun. We have no choice but to use the short, the, the long form. Galodna estudiente chitaya. Okay, so now the question maybe is, can we ever use a long form ad adjective in the predicate position? Yes, we can. And if you remember, uh, we actually did a lot of that in uh, chapter one, just describing things, right? Like, for example, well, at the kniga interesnaya, or at the kniga novaya. Um, now, remember that in modern Russian, we said already that a lot of adjectives simply aren't used in the short form anymore. So, well, theoretically, you could say at the kniga nava, right? Russians simply don't say that anymore. Um, so we, we have no choice with, with the vast majority of adjectives in modern spoken Russian but to use the, sh the long form everywhere. At the kniga novaya. Um, now, in some cases, uh, we can make an, a further distinction that if, if both the long form and the short form are available, then the short form speaks to a passing condition, right, a temporary condition. For example, at the Chelyvik Borden, this person is sick, meaning he's sick right now. But if we say at the Chelyvik Balnoy, it means that this person is, is kind of permanently sick. This is, a, this is an enduring quality that he has. He's either a sickly person, right, he's prone to sickness, he's always sick. Um, or it could mean uh, kind of like he's a sicko or something. In, in fact, this calls to mind the opening lines of Dostoevsky's uh, Notes from the Underground, where he starts out, right, the Balnoy, I'm a sick man. Um, I'm a sick person, meaning I'm not, it's not that I have the flu, it's I'm, I'm, a, I'm a sicko, that kind of idea. Okay, other examples. Eta studentka zanyata, eta studentka zanyata, meaning she's busy right now versus at Ochin Zanyataya Studentka. That would be a much you know, less often heard construction, but it would mean the long form that she's always busy. That's just the way she is. It's her kind of enduring personal quality. Okay, so let's back away from this topic a little bit before we do our drills and uh, try to contain it, right, lest we get too confused. Okay, so short form adjectives at very specific use, right? They're used only in the predicate position. On top of that, there, in modern spoken Russian, these, these forms are limited to really a very, a pretty short list of adjectives, right? So I may have failed to mention earlier that there are a lot of adjectives that have no short form whatsoever, right? Like, for example, ruski, right? All these adjectives in ski have no short form whatsoever. Again, others that may traditionally have had such a form, like novi, right? Um, we almost never hear, in, especially in spoken Russian and even in more recent literary Russian, right? It's, it's a very uh, peculiar thing that uh, beginning students certainly shouldn't worry about. So for now, as a beginning student, you should only worry about seeing and certainly using short form adjectives uh, in terms of the, the ones we see listed in these tables, right? The ones that uh, you've been told are used um, regularly in modern spoken Russian in their short forms in the predicate. Um, okay, so again, we can think of these in a certain sense as being kind of exceptional, kind of weird, and we'll just watch for them moving forward. Okay, let's fill in a few blanks. Um, now, again, we're, uh, we need to use these in agreement with their subject, uh, right? So let's go from gatovi and work with the short form gatov, and remember that we're essentially adding noun endings to this adjective, right? Let's say, Они blank есть. They are ready to eat. What will that be? Они готовы. Они готовы есть. Uh, he is ready and she is ready. Он готов и она готова. Okay, number two. Занятой or занятый. Uh, means occupied, uh, literally. Занятой. Note the stress difference means busy in, in the sense of a busy person, kind of a busy body. Although, again, it's not usually seen too often in the long form like that. Anyway, so let's work with Zanyat. The student today is very busy. The student's very busy today. 
Студент сегодня очень занят. His female friend, or it could be his girlfriend, is also very busy. Его подруга тоже очень занята. She's very busy, занята. Okay, number three. Uh, счастливый is our long form. Let's work with the short form счастлив. Right, happy. Uh, are you happy or not? Speaking to a, a masculine ты. Ты счастлив или нет? Okay, let's ask the same question to a female ты. Ты счастлива или нет? Number four, пьяный means drunk. Okay, пьян is the short form masculine. He's drunk, he drank all the vodka. Он пьян, он всю водку выпил. Okay, let's say they are drunk, they drank all the beer. Они uh, пьяны, они пьяны, они всё пиво выпили. Number five, uh, трезвый, meaning sober. I would say she is sober, she did not drink vodka. Она трезва, она трезва, она водку не пила. We are sober, we didn't drink beer. Мы трезвы, мы пиво не пили. Now remember here we could say трезвы or трезвы. Either stress is possible. So, we, 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 as you may have noticed in the table, we were seeing quite a few unusual uh, stress patterns with these um, short form adjectives. So again, we ultimately we just had to kind of memorize those. Uh, they are tricky and somewhat hard to predict. Okay, uh, number six, здоровый, healthy. Слава Богу, я жив и blank. I'm alive and healthy. This is the Russian for sort of alive and well, right? Я жив и здоров. I'm alive and healthy. Okay, let's use that in the plural. Слава Богу, everyone is alive and well. Все живы и здоровы. Все живы и здоровы. Number seven, сыты, meaning beaten your fill, you're satisfied. Сыт. Они съели весь торт. They've eaten the entire cake or the whole cake. Они сыты. Right? They are happy. They're full. Собака съела все мясо. Она сыта. Right? The dog ate all the meat. She is full. Она сыта. Okay, now let's watch out in the final examples for the mobile vowel that, that crops up in the masculine short form. From Davolny we get the masculine Davolen. Okay, let's say how are things with her? How are how are things going for her? Kakunyodila. Is she satisfied? Is she happy? Okay, now when we add that ah ending here to get our feminine, we're gonna squeeze out the mobile vowel. So we're back to Davolna. Ana Davolna. Right is she satisfied? How are how are things with them? Kakunich dila. Are they satisfied? So the plural will be Aini Davolni. Number nine, Svabodni is the long form, short form masking with the mobile vowel. Svabodin. Let's ask, is this seat free? Is this place or is this seat free? At the Miesta Svabodna. At the Miesta Svabodna. Okay, that's a nice useful uh, little expression there. Is this is this table free? Okay, now we've got a masculine. At the stool, svobodyan. Right? Masculine with the mobile vowel. Number ten, galodny, hungry. Short form, golodin. Right? Again, the rather unpredictable uh, stress shift. Let's say the brother and sister are terribly hungry. Okay, compound subject, so we're gonna need a plural uh, predicate adjective. Brat i sestra ujasna. Uh, Golodny, sorry, Golodny, Golodny, even I screwed the stress up. Golodny, or you could hear Golodny, right? Both are possible. Um, let's see. Ya domo sto koshka. Okay, now we have a feminine noun, a cat. I think the cat is hungry. Ya domo sto koshka Golodna. Okay, 11. Balnoy, meaning sick. Short form, bolden for masculine. Let's say, let's say things are bad for, for grandma. Grandma feels badly. Now remember this um, subjectless construction, right? Plocha 
plus the date of babushkia, right? Things are bad for babushka, for grandma, she feels badly. She's sick again. Ana apiais baulna, right? So again, the a ah ending is squeezing out the mobile vowel and we're left with baulna. Dedushki plocha, okay, granddad feels bad. He's sick again. On apiais borgen, borgen. Okay, here are a few questions you could try answering or discussing if you have a, a partner. Uh, now again, depending on who you're speaking to, you would need a masculine or a feminine uh, adjectival ending. Uh, or by the way, if you want to be polite, you could use vui, and in that case you would use the plural form, right, of all of these adjectives. But here in the examples, we're using tui everywhere, we're being familiar. Or okay, that's how we say, do you have a busy schedule? A lot of students, they're told that zanyat means busy, but that's only true speaking of a person, like saying, I'm busy. Uh, we can't say that I have a busy schedule uh, using zanyat. We have to use a different term, nasishani, which means something like um, satiated or... or um, yeah, kind of in, in, infused, or uh, it, it's kind of, uh, you can see actually that it's related to the short form sleet that we've been using. But again, it's kind of a, a specific, uh, rather specific use nowadays, meaning like a busy schedule, a full schedule. Number two, to vecherem. Are you free this evening? Or feminine, to svobodna sivonya vecherem. Number three, are you hungry? Is everyone hungry right now? Number four, what do you usually eat when you're hungry? Okay, now look, we're getting sort of follow-up questions, accusatives, right? What do you eat when you're hungry? Urubrod, a sandwich, chocolate, Marojanaya, ice cream, yablaka, an apple, banan, banana, confetu, uh, candy. Number five. Что ты обычно пьешь, когда ты хочешь пить? What do you usually drink when you want to drink? By the way, there is no Russian word for thirsty. Uh, no word really whatsoever. Uh, so to say I'm thirsty in Russian we have to basically say, I want to drink. There's really no other way. You can just say, I want to drink, or maybe you could say, I want a certain beverage or whatever. Я хочу пить. Okay, so back to the question. Что ты обычно пьешь, когда ты хочешь пить? What do you usually drink when you want to drink? Or again, in English, we just say, what do you drink when you're thirsty? Воду, лимонад. That means any kind of soda, by the way. It doesn't mean lemonade. Молоко, кофе, чай. Piva, all of these in the accusative. Number six, to be a хорошо сегодня. Are things going well today? How do you, you're feeling good today? Ты болен или здоров? Are you sick or healthy? Feminine version would be ты болна или здорова? Number seven, твое задание на сегодня готово или нет? Is your assignment for today ready or not? So there's a neuter, right? Твое задание готово или нет? Okay, by the way, here's a poster for a, a classic uh, Soviet film. Vyele uh, Sonce Pustini, The White Sun of the Desert. And, uh, you know, this example of how to say you're thirsty, you have to say, Ya chachu pit. Again, there is no adjective for thirsty. By the way, if you watch this movie, uh, you can find it on YouTube, or at least it should be posted there somewhere. It used to be. It opens with a man that's been buried in sand up to his head, uh, and our hero, Tavarish Sukhov, um, basically digs him out of the sand there and gives him water to drink. You could say, This person terribly wants to drink, right? He's terribly thirsty. Right? Literally, praise to God, Slava Bogu, thank, thank, Thank God, Tavarish Sukhov, Comrade Sukhov, gives to him to drink, right? He lets him drink. He gives 
to, to him to drink literally. Okay, let's end today's lesson with a very useful short form adjective, right? So we've already seen the grammar here. We've seen how short form adjectives work. We're now just going to add one more, namely nujen, nujen. Okay, we can think of that as meaning needed or necessary, right? So to, to talk about things we need in Russian, we say things like, a computer is necessary for me, or a pen is necessary for me, right? And to do that, well, let's think about the grammar. Uh, dictionary, for example, is necessary for me or to me. Okay, the to me or for me is going to appear in the dative, as you may have guessed. Uh, but back to the basic construction, dictionary is needed. Dictionary is necessary. We have subject, linking verb, predicate adjective. So we use the short forms of an adjective, nujny, which means necessary or needed. Okay, so the short forms are nujn, nujna, nujna, nujny. Right, so same endings we just learned a moment ago. And we'll use those to say things like, mnie nujn slavar. Uh, now, the word order, again, is, is in theory flexible, although um, usually we'd be emphasizing what we need, right? That would usually be the point of an utterance like that, right? Slavar is kind of the point of the utterance. Mnie nujn slavar. But now, keep in mind, right, that uh, word order is flexible. The... Uh, most important part of the sentence usually comes last. So if we were saying something like, uh, I need a dictionary, right? A dictionary is necessary for me. And that were the point of the sentence. Then of course we could say something like, Slavar nujen mnie, right? Okay, let's take a feminine example. Mnie nujna ruchka. Mnie nujna ruchka. I need a pen. A pen is necessary for me. And finally, kajdmu studentu nujny slavar i ruchka, compound subject, hence plural, right? A dictionary and a pen together are going to be plural. They are nujny. They are needed or necessary for every student. Dative kajdmu studentu nujny slavar i ruchka. Okay, let's uh, combine a few words here to say things like this, right? We're going to need a dative to tell for whom or to whom the thing is needed. And uh, so remember, the tricky part here is uh, that the thing we need is the subject of the sentence, right? So here's another case where the English idiom is very different from the Russian. In English, we say, I need blank, right? Uh, so the blank, the thing we need is the direct object. In Russian, the idiom kind of flips everything on its head and says, the thing is needed for me, to me, right? So we, again, we have to really think about what we're literally saying in the Russian and, in a sense, ignore the English idiom. Okay, uh, by the way, here's another case where, again, to the extent that we are kind of thinking of Russian in terms of English, eventually we want to get away from that, of course, but at, at this stage, you know, it's almost inevitable to do that. Uh, again, in a lot of cases, if we use some somewhat awkward English, it can mirror the Russian construction almost exactly, right? So if we say bread is necessary for mom, well, that makes perfectly good sense in English. It sounds a little bit weird. But if we think of it that way, then we the Russian uh, construction is pretty much crystal clear, right? Chleb nuzhen mamie. Mamie nuzhen chleb. Again, word order, the thing we need would typically appear at the end of the sentence. Okay, so let's say number one, uh, beer is necessary for dad, or dad needs beer. Atsu would be our dative. Atsu, now we need neuter, nujna, and now our subject, piva. Atsu, nujna, piva. Dad needs beer. Number two, tea is necessary for my sister. My sister needs tea. Maye sestria, there's your dative, nujn. Chai, right? Nujin chai. Chai is masculine. Number three, the student needs an answer. An answer is necessary for the student. Studentu, dative, nujin, atviet. Number four, the cat needs milk. Milk is necessary for the cat. Koshkia is your dative. Nujna, neuter, short form adjective, malako. Koshkia, nujna, malako. 
Number four, my friend needs a jacket, neuter. Mayemu drugu, there's our dative. Mayemu drugu nujna paltoa. Number six, I need coffee. Now, coffee, as you may remember, is masculine. That's a kind of weird example in Russian of a word ending in yeah, that's masculine. Um, okay, so I I need coffee. Мне нужен кофе. Мне нужен кофе. Number seven, ты. So let's say to you is necessary a fork and knife, right? You need a fork and knife. We have a compound subject, so we're going to need a plural form of нужен. Тебе нужны вилка и нож. Number eight. Uh, he needs a spoon. Yumu nujna voshka. Number nine, she needs kefir, which is a kind of yogurty drink in Russia, if you don't know what kefir is. I think most people now know what that is. Um, when I was little, I think it, it was non existent here, right? So the first time I ever heard of kefir was when I went to Russia. But nowadays, it's one of those products that have kind of become popular seemingly everywhere. So. It's not quite as exotic as it maybe used to be. Anyway, it's masculine, so yay nujen kefir. Number ten, they need sugar. Im, right? The dative im nujen sachar, masculine. Number eleven, you. Let's pretend it's you plural. You guys need butter. Bam nujna masla neuter. Number 12, we need chocolate, right? Chocolate is necessary for us. Nam nujen chocolat. Nam nujen chocolat. Okay, so that does it for today's lesson. Again, the, these short form adjectives are always kind of tricky. I think uh, the, the best approach with this topic is with so many others in Russian is to try to, as I like to say, quarantine. That word now sounds like such a dirty word after the COVID crisis, but I used to use it more often. Maybe I should get away from it. But anyway, the idea is we have a bit of grammar that's maybe a bit confusing, but is ultimately rather limited, right? It's kind of a, a somewhat, well, a very special type of construction whose use is, is, is very specific. And then again, on top of that here, we have only a certain number of vocab items of adjectives that are ever used like this in modern spoken Russian. So uh, again, especially when we're actively speaking, uh, we shouldn't expect to be spitting out these short form adjectives constantly, right? It's a very limited number of examples. We've seen almost all of the, the major ones today already. We'll add a few more down the road. Uh, but again, otherwise, you're unlikely to hear these in spoken language. Uh, the only place you will see them is when you start reading more literature, right? In formal Russian, especially if you start reaching back to older literature, like, I don't know, Pushkin or Dostoevsky or anything like that, then you will see them more frequently. Uh, but even in, when, when we'll see those, they're fairly easy to spot and understand passively, even though we might not be using all of them in active speech. Okay, so that's it for today. Uh, until next time, do свидания, товарищи. Союз!